Hey guys, it's Sensuki, and welcome to Sensuki's Pillars of Eternity feature wish list. Um, and this feature wish list is coming in light of the fact that Pillars of Eternity has now, thankfully, been delayed, which is really good news. Um, so what I've done is um, I know that um, Josh Sawyer posted on the forums um, earlier today, and he said that. Um, what were his exact, his exact words? He said something about um, imp, uh, abu planning features that backers and internal developers have recommended or something like that. I can't remember what it was called exactly. Um, but anyway, um, I wanted to get in a feature wish list and put it up on forums as quick as possible just in case like any of the things in here don't get missed. Um, most of them are pretty minor, minor things and they should be easily implementable, but some of them aren't. Um, and I've taken a couple of people's input on this. Um, I got some input from Moonwolf, who's been doing some good um, testing, and um, Sword of the Sith as well. Um, so they had a couple of things to add to my list. So I'm going to go through them all. Um, this probably won't be that long of a video, probably like 10 minutes or something like that. Um, so the first, first section is character creation. Um, now the first thing that um, I think Obsidian need to do with character creation is change the order of the elements. Um, and I posted a thread with um, some mock-ups about how to do that. I really think that cultural selection needs to come before attributes because um, culture does give you plus one to an attribute and um, it also um, gives you gear as well. And um, I think that Pretty much everybody wants culture to come before attributes as well. Um, and the other thing that is related to that is that um, having culture coming before attributes would be useful um, because then it would add um, some reason to add showing of derived stats dur um, during character creation because um, currently, like, I think character creation could be a bit. Um, it could, could, like if you actually show the drive stats in character creation it will it'll be much easier for new players to understand what they're getting for their choices particularly when selecting attributes and all that kind of stuff and picking a class um, currently there's just a text box being used for like what classes get um, and I really think if there's an extra UI panel or something that has like the defenses and accuracies and all that kind of stuff um, damage with weapons and all that sort of stuff, uh, interrupt values, concentration values, it would actually be really handy um, to have that stuff in there. The other thing I, I think they should add in is cultural gear selection, um, just like a sub-menu of culture, when you pick your culture, you get like a choice of a starting weapon or something like that, because like currently no characters other than the ranger can start with a, um, a range weapon, and um, it's just kind of not that great. Um, to not be able to choose your weapon. I do know that um, there will be a shop at the start of the game um, where you will be able to swap some stuff over, but it will be nice to be able to get the weapon you want straight away. Or at least have a choice between like, you know, three or four or five different weapons under each culture uh, um, or class and culture combination. Uh, the next thing is I think there should be more colours in the cloth tint colour picker. Um, in version 2.4 Five, seven, there was two colors less than the Infinity Engine games. Now, I made a request for um, at least a couple more. They added that couple more and they changed the um, color selection around a bit, but like some colors are really underrepresented, particularly purple and red, and the shades of them aren't particularly fantastic either. Um, and also, like the, the actual color that's shown in the, in the actual box is very different to how it's actually displayed on the character for some reason, so there seems to be a bit of inconsistency. Um, to that. It would also be nice to have a couple more hair colours per sub race as well. Um, some more shades of red hair, like brighter red hair or something like that. Just a few more hair colours um, would be good. And um, the other thing is it would be nice to be able to select a talent at first level. Um, so next section is art. Um, and this is mostly related to character art and item art. Um, the first thing I think stands out is that um, the male models of playable races need to have less um, sort of cartoon character sort of square shoulders. Like a particularly, um, I think dwarves are, and um, or Maurer, they have like really, really noticeable like um, 
I don't know, G.I. Joe sort of really square shoulders and stuff like that. It looks kind of strange, particularly I think Amaras and Dwarves are the worst defenders so far. So if they could have more like rounded shoulders or something like that, because like shoulders don't protrude square out from the body, um, that would be one just like thing that is immediately noticeable um, when you like got characters in the character creation screen. It's not as bad in the in the actual um, isometric and and axonometric perspective, but it is very noticeable in the other screens. The second thing is that um, female characters don't quite stand out enough from male characters. Um, not necessarily like they are noticeably smaller in size than the male counterparts of their race but they like particularly in some armor types they don't quite stand out stand out enough um, and that's mostly due to proportional stuff um, like uh, with the chest area and the waist and, and stuff like that and also their idle stance is kind of strange compared to the male one they have their I think it's their left foot is like behind their body and they're sort of like um, it's not, they're not standing up straight, whereas like the male ones, their feet are sort of together and they're sort of, you know, they're standing up straight, but the females are sort of in like a, almost getting ready to run position or something like that. And when they're actually in the level and standing face onto the camera, they look like they're standing at a right angle. It looks really also like on a gradient, they're not actually standing straight and it looks kind of weird, particularly in the isometric camera. Um, the other thing I think needs to be changed is that I noticed that they reduced the size of the ranger's animal bear companion um, in the latest patch because they were having some issues with it going through area transitions and stuff like that. But currently the bear just looks like a bear cub and the selection circle is smaller than the bear and that is actually really jarring. So I really think that they need to increase it or change it back to the way it was and just find a way to make area transitions work better with um, creatures with larger selection circles. So, um, I'm not a huge fan of like the icon based um, area transitions but I have a feeling they may have done that so that if they want to do a tablet port or something like that it's easier for people to transition areas I'm not 100% sure um, the next thing is that I think a lot of the creatures particularly like beetles and spiders and wolves they're all way too big um, all in the infinity engine games most creatures have a selection circle the same size as the player like most of the humanoid races or monster races and just like creatures in general they were the same they had the same selection circle size as the, as the player character and this made it really easy like in um, for navigation and all that kind of stuff and kept things relatively sensible but um, areas in Pillars of Eternity are smaller than they are in the Infinity Engine games not in exact size because we all know that the um, Pools of Eternity has got way higher resolution areas, but relative to um, area size, screen size, and character size, areas are smaller. They're much, uh, they're not as tall. They're very like sort of corridory because they're in 16-9 perspective, and um, the creatures in general are a lot larger than the characters are, and this is creating a lot of issues um, with pathfinding and. Yeah, just like in the, in the ogre cave, um, spiders just stack up in in um, entrances to different parts of the cave because like the amount of spiders that are in the in the level um, on hard and path of the dam, they can't all fit through because they're all the models are just too big. So I really think they need to have a look at how big um, enemies like that were. Like wolves are, are too big as well. Like they could be reduced to the size of. Um, of the player character's selection circle easily without any um, impact on, on the game. Uh, I think some of the beetles, like wood beetles, could be reduced to be smaller as well. Um, stone beetles and Adria beetles could be... Oh, I don't think Adria beetles are probably alright, but maybe even stone beetles could be reduced a little bit. Just, um, I, I, I can see, like, if this is going to be the trend going through the whole game, I can see some issues arising from... Um, from the general increase in creature size, especially in interior areas. Uh, the next thing is, I think that um, a couple of people have mentioned this, but like the pure white in the character's eyes is a bit jarring as well. Um, so I think that needs to be improved. That's probably an easy fix. And um, I also went through the weapon files today and I noticed that um, a few types of weapons are actually missing a unique weapon model. Um, I think swords, flails, and hunting bows were three of those, and I think arquebuses as well. Um, and a lot of the other one, 
the other ones only had like one of the uniques that had an actual unique weapon model. So it would be nice if the character art team could go through them and add add a few new um, unique weapon models towards the if if they have any time to do that and um, even just change the texturing of the default ones um, on some of them because I noticed that one of the battle axes all it was was it was like the default exceptional battle axe and then they had like um, they had a different texture like painted onto the onto the actual metal which made it look really cool so just stuff like that uh, the next section is graphics um, the first thing that really stands out that needs to be improved is character occlusion and sorting in exterior areas um, char characters disappear into the environment like in tall grass and stuff and it's kind of cool but it's not very helpful as well because um, like it, bits of their leg and stuff will stick out through the grass and it and whereas like it just looks really silly in in some areas like when you spawn at the start of the back of beta the the cow dwarf or whatever that's facing towards you in the um, bandit group over on the right like he you can like that just looks really weird um, the way he's looking at you and the way how you can see like part of his leg but then like the rest of his body is cut off above that in the grass and the other thing that really needs to be improved is when um, any sort of character is behind any um, any of the terrain like currently if your character walks behind a tree and you say you've got hide selection circles on and your character walks behind a tree you will not be able to see them like you wouldn't even know that they were there and it's the same with NPCs as well. Um, and they really need to have a look at how the Infinity Engine games handled that because the Infinity Engine games had a really good um, system for seeing characters through objects and stuff like that. And they need to try and um, replicate that as much as possible. They do have a wireframe version of that for interiors at the moment, but I don't think that quite cuts it. It doesn't quite look as good as having the sort of... Um, it's hard to describe what it is, but you can sort of see the whole character through the wall but there's like a ghostly sort of um, shader over the top of it. it and it looks that that's how the Infinity Engine games did it anyway so I think if they could make it look more like that that would be good um, the other thing they need to fix is the sharpness filter whatever graphical filter they're using to control the environments um, it looks better than before like before it was really blurry but now it's a bit sharp so I think they, they need to adjust that a little bit that's probably obvious um, I think still think that character colors look too washed out and that's all colors like their skin their cloth tints and armor and all that kind of stuff and they don't quite pop as much as the characters in the Infinity Engine games did like if I was at to, to take a screenshot of like Baldur's Gate 2 and Pills of Eternity and put the characters next to each other the colors would be uh, would stand out a lot more on the Baldur's Gate 2 character than they would on the Pillars of Eternity character. Even if I did it in Icewind Dale, which has more drab colors across the board, the colors would be more would be richer than they are in Pillars of Eternity um, presently. And the last thing for graphics is the shadow map accuracy. Currently, um, the shadow map is off on all the areas. If you walk it up a character next to a, um, a shadow that's burnt into the map. Um, even if your character is not on the shadow and you're like standing somewhere near the shadow that's um, burnt into the map, your character will get the shadow from, from that area because the shadow maps are inaccurate. And then when you walk, I think it's, I think it's uh, depth wise, it's like the Y, it, like on the X and Y scale, how where X is across the bottom and Y is up, it's like the Y axis that, that's off. I think, I'm not sure if it's X as well, but it might be all of them. The, the shadow map appears to be um, fatter than the actual shadows on the area. So like if you're standing near a shadow that's on it baked into the map, um, then your character will still get a shadow. So I think they need to tighten that up if possible. Uh, the next section is areas. Um, one thing that I, I'm finding a little bit jarring at the moment that would be nice to have fixed in the uh, final version is that when you're talking to shopkeepers um, you can only talk to them from a specific um, location that's set in in the game so like when you click um, dialogue with the blacksmith or dangler or something your character has to run up to a specific a specific spot in front of the counter to be able to interact with them but in the infinity engine games like you can talk to any character when you when you like go up next to them so I think it'd be nice if they had the option to go up to the counter or um, and the option to go around the counter and talk to them as well like in the Infinity Engine games. And I guess I'm saying that because like I'm used to playing the Infinity Engine games and I'm used to actually walking around the counter and then 
uh, clicking dialogue with, with the shopkeeper, because like in the Infinity Engine games there weren't many, well, I don't know if there was any titles where you could actually talk to them over the counter or not. Uh, the next thing is that the player character should always initiate dialogue. Currently, the closest character goes up and initiates dialogue with an NPC, but the player character should always be the one that does that, because they're, they're actually the one speaking. Um, it'd be nice to, ha to be able to transition into interiors, like uh, houses and stuff, while, while have, like, having multiple transitions at once. This might be a limitation of the Unity engine or something like that, but um, or something to do with serialization. But currently, it's not possible to do. That would be a really nice feature to be able to have um, in the game. I'm not sure if that will be possible, but it's on the wish list anyway. Um, I, as I'd love to be able to um, actually play the interiors in the beta properly. So it'd be really nice if the Obsidian could look at fixing the frame rates of in-area animations, because currently. The different crossing and Lee are men are really, really like the performance is really, really bad, and I'm only getting like 25 to 30 frames in inside the uh, different ruins, and it's just making me not want to play the area because of how bad it runs. So, like, if that if that could be a priority, that would be really good because then I could actually get in and test the area. Um, I think there needs to be more ranged enemies than there currently is. Like currently in the beta, there's not really that many ranged enemies. So, like, if encounters could be had a, um, have some more ranged enemies in it, that would be good. And I think that um, after playing a fair bit of the Deeper Crossing, um, the Ogre Cave and the Stormwall Gorge exterior, I think the encounters in those need to be improved. Um, currently the Beetle encounters were nerfed from the last patch and um, the encounter with the Spider Queen in the cave is like too easy. The, the actual first encounter in the Ogre Cave is way harder than the uh, boss fight with the Spider Queen. She goes down like a sack of bricks. Like, you know, she's so easy to beat compared to like the um, the spiders that have petrify or whatever. She can't even get close to you. Like, she gets stuck um, behind all the other spiders, and you can pepper her down with ranged weapons. It's pretty silly at the moment. Um, and yeah, I, the lions in the Stonewall Gorge are a bit easy. I know that there's like one group of I think it's Menpuga or something like that. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Menpigra, Menpugra. The, um, they're like at, at the entrance to Liara Men. Um, so I don't know. Just the, the Stormwall Gorgic series is a bit boring. Um, at least the top half of it anyway. <coughs> the next section is, uh, user interface. Um, now I know that targeting reticules will be coming in soon. So, um, that's obviously on the list and hopefully that the movement indicators will be changed to be like target re targeting reticules because currently the uh, the uh, little uh, yellow indicators for them aren't that great. Um, I'd like uh, NPCs to have different colored selection circles so like that that's not when playing on colorblind mode so when you disable colorblind mode um, I think NPCs should stay the the blue color and the player the party members player play control members should be green because then you can actually tell the difference because it's really annoying when you're running through the town and like people's ambient text and selection circles popping up when they're talking and like you confuse them for a party member and stuff like that. I really think there needs to be a selection circle feedback slider like in the Infinity Engine game so you can control when selection circles are displayed. I'd like to be able to see them all the time. Um, currently you can't do that. I um, also think there needs to be separate tooltips for UI and uh, combat slash character tooltips. So currently, like, there's only one tooltip slider, and like, I prefer to have a different tooltip speed for the UI tooltips and the um, the in combat tooltips. So like, when you mouse over a character and it brings up their combat hard box text box thingy, um, I'd like to have a um, longer delay for that than, I, than the um, when I'm mousing over an ability in the action bar or something like that. So it would be nice to have a different slider for both of those. Um, I think that the changes to the combat log were really good. They added in the coloured text and made it made the text smaller, but I think they um, it, the text looks a bit jarring at sitting at the current point in the combat log. It is, it's like, it's padded across to the left a little bit. I think they need, they need to add a border in so that it doesn't look as, as like, I don't know, strange that being that far out from the edge of the combat log. Um, I think the Infinity Engine Gates has something like that, I'm not sure. 
Um, and I'll, there also needs to be a filter for the combat logs. You need to filter out actions because currently there's just too much stuff um, that go, that's coming in the log. It's making it really hard to read. So you need to be able to filter out certain events. Um, now I think you, I think um, the the people are calling them pips. Um, the the pips representing health um, on the combat hard needs to be changed to a health bar, and um, there needs to be a feedback slider that controls when the combat hards are displayed because um, currently like having them displayed for every unit on the screen at all the time uh, makes combat really confusing because it's adding a lot of stuff on the screen that you don't really need to be seeing all the time. It'd be nice if, if you wanted to see them all the time you could turn the feedback slider all the way up so that you, or all the way down so you can see them all the time but it'd be nice to be able to um, control when they're displayed. And I think I, I made a post on the forum somewhere about this, like having all the different steps of all the clauses to when, when, for when they would be displayed. Um, I think the engagement UI should be a static thing and it should be toggle all because I really don't like the, uh, the floating arrows. I think that's really distracting. Um, it'd be nice if it was just like a, um, something that is completely static, like circles on the ground or something like that. Um, I think Hormalark did some okay uh, mock-ups for that, but I think they could be handled a little bit better. But that's like a, I know the arrows are only temporary, but I think a moving element like that is not a good thing. Um, the new shader that um, has been added in for um, units, bodies, and I think it's crafting ingredients and stuff like that. That needs to be, um, for, for units, that needs to be toggleable. I really don't like it. Um, I actually disliked it so much that I modded it out of the game straight away. Um, so I'd, I'd like to be able to turn that off. Um, or it would be nice to have a slider to control when it's displayed. Um, I think it'd be useful for AoE spells, but that's about it. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see it for any other thing. Um, so if there was a slider that could toggle, like you know, maybe enemies only, um, enemies and NPCs only, everybody, or just like AoE spells or all that kind of stuff, um, that would be nice. Otherwise, just allow me to turn it off. Um, and I also think that. Using a shader on um, bodies and crafting ingredients, not necessarily the best choice. I'd much prefer to have like the container UI for that instead, like the blue, um, the blue outline thing, rather than having the the blinking shader. So I think that just looks better. Um, I think that uh, the NPC backer icon should be made an option, like whether you want that on or off, because it's I don't I don't like that having that forced um, forced on me. Um, so that's another thing that I've modded out of the game, because it's really intrusive. Um, so it, that that should be made an option in the options menu somewhere. And also think that the um, the different tooltip color that backer NPCs have should be made change to a less offensive color have it like a different shade of brown or something like that just not not yell the current gold yellow it just looks ugh, looks yuck um i think that the inventory ui needs to be improved um and i've made a couple of mock-ups of this already but i think that hormalark's design is probably the closest to how it should be he did a really good um design for that and i will include his uh mock-up in the thread link because it is really good and I think the shop UI needs to be improved as well. I think it's um, harder to use than the Infinity Engine one. Um, Innkeeper Gold needs to be not a thing that needs to be taken out of the game because, like, in in the current patch, Innkeeper Gold resets on area transitions. So all you have to do is just keep going out of the shop and coming back in, and the Innkeeper's Gold resets. There's no point in having it; just get rid of it. Um, the tab, the stash interface needs to be tabbed uh, rather than page. And uh, tab by item type would be really nice as well, but um, that sort of ties into the, the inventory UI. And Hormalark's already got a really nice design for how the inventory should, um, should look. I think that the developers should have a look at that. And the, other, the last thing for the UI is that you should be able to change um, colors in the inventory, like character colors. Because um, currently you can't do that. And that was something that you could do in the Infinity Engine games. Uh, the next section is combat. Um, 
the first major thing that is missing from Pills of Eternity at the moment is the Infinity Engine auto attack clauses. So like when you have a group of characters selected and you click to attack somebody and they when they've killed that enemy, they should automatically attack um, the next the, the closest enemy of the same time. Um, I think recovery time pause while moving should be removed because um, it doesn't it makes the combat not feel very RTS like and it creates some really awkward situations where characters that are supposed to be sticky aren't sticky because enemies can just run past them and then all the time while where they're chasing um, their recovery time is paused and then when they stop um, they have to wait until their recovery time has gone down the full amount to be able to attack I think that's really bad I did, made a mod that removed recovery time pause it fixed that issue and it just felt a lot smoother so I think that that should be looked into um, I really think that uh, per hit damage in conjunction with the new attack resolution system really needs to be um, reconsidered. Currently per hit damage is really really high and um, all pretty much everybody's scoring hits and doing damage more often so like um, Pills of Eternity feels a lot more lethal than the Infinity Engine games um, and it also is having, it's creating some issues with the pacing of combat as well. So. I really think that um, either stamina values need to be increased or something like that or per hit damage needs to be toned down a little bit. Um, I think uh, recovery time, the recovery time rules need to have another look as well um, because there, currently there are some extreme cases where um, just like wizards casting an armor is just a really bad idea. So like if, if the amount of recovery time that uh, especially wizards have when casting spells sh um, should be reduced maybe a little bit because um, currently yeah it's just really gnarly especially with the longer spells there's no point wearing armor at all um, mo movement speed of in, in combat in particular needs to be reduced and one thing that I've noticed is enemies are just way too quick and it's creating like co just a random melee at the start of combat every time uh, so it feels nothing like the Infinity Engine games um, at the start of combat anyway because everyone just like rushes at full speed towards each other. Um, rogues need to be able to escape over um, certain types of terrain that have no nav mesh such as like trees um, or rocks. Currently they crash into the edge of the nav mesh and AOE abilities need to be targetable on the same areas as that because currently in the Infinity Engine games you could like target an AOE on um, on terrain with no nav mesh, and it would, um, it might not affect the area with no, where there was no nav mesh, but it would allow you to position a spell correctly. Like in, in interiors, you, you could cast a fireball on top of a table and it would still hit everybody there. But in Pillars of Eternity, you can't actually cast the fireball on the table, you've got to cast it next to it. And then the table blocks the fireball AoE as well. The next section is general mechanics. I think that um, search should work when standing still and not in stealth mode, even if it's got like a two second delay or something, because currently um, that's how it was in the Infinity Engine games, like you move, you stood still, and then you could de detect a secret door, so I think that's how it should work, because currently you have to be in scouting mode um, for it to work, and in my opinion scouting mode is something you do when you're moving, so I think if you're standing still and not in scouting mode you should be able to detect stuff with um, your mechanics skill. And when you're in stealth mode, you should be able to do it while moving. But you, um, you should not be able to do it while moving in normal, like when you're running around or whatever. Um, I think you should, you should be able to drop items. Um, this is something that's not currently um, in the game, and it's been left out deliberately um, to uh, reduce the amount of issues with uh, persistence, because apparently dropped items increases the complexity of the persistence system, and I think the developers said they thought it would be superfluous having the stash system, so you shouldn't really need to drop anything, but I, I really think you do need to be able to drop stuff, so I'd, I'd really like to see that in. I really think that um, characters need a ran or all units need a random 0 to 10 frame delay before they start moving, so that would desynchronize the current droid army look that the party has when they're running along. Um, that was something that the, the Infinity Engine games did, and it was a very simple solution to solve that problem. It should be fairly easy, e easy to implement as well, and I wouldn't be surprised if that comes in the next patch or something. Um, one of the things that um, Josh Sawyer mentioned in his post on the forums today was that they were adding in 
XP for disarming tracks and picking locks. Now I think um, this is kind of a bad thing, or it probably is a bad thing, especially uh, XP for um, for picking locks because usually that is related to um, traversing through the environment. And um, I think instead an ob obstacle based XP system would be better, whereas um, lock XP would create degenerate gameplay where um, you pick a lock but then you go you go around the other way anyway and stuff like that it would always be the best option um, so I think like there should be an XP system where you either get XP for picking a lock and you go through there or you do the alternate route and you get the XP for doing that and you can't actually get both at the same time um, I also think that uh, fists need to be part of a weapon group and uh, currently like when you have no weapons as a monk, it's like it counts as I think single unarmed or something like that. They're not actually attacking with both fists, so maybe fists should be considered two weapon fighting by default. Um, I'm not sure. I think uh, starting att like attributes need to have more of an impact on the game. Currently, like after the last patch, um, as long as you're over ten, you're pretty much all right. Like it doesn't really matter too much what you have. Um, like they just don't really have much of an impact on the game compared to advancement um, and all that kind of stuff. It's like a really minimal thing. I really think they have need to have more of an impact. The next section is character advancement. and There's a few more sections after this, but not many. Um, I think the ability choice pool for each non-caster... Sorry, I think there needs to be an ability choice pool for each non-caster class on level up. Because currently, like, there's a static order of abilities that you get and you, you have no input as to what they are or when you get them um, so it would be nice if you had some choice so like say there's 12 levels in Pillars of Eternity um, make it like there's 16 abilities or something and you get to pick um, which ones you want at, a, at every level and you, you don't get to choose all of them or something like that I don't know something like that um, it would be nice to get talents more often at level up, and it would be nice to gain an extra attribute point maybe um, every fifth or sixth level, so you only get a two extra attribute points um, throughout the course of the game because the maximum level is 12. Um, the next section is narrative, and there's only one thing I've got to say here, and that would be um, I know that they're doing a narrative review, which is important. I also think it would be nice to make uh, if they have any extra time, go over and add some extra reactivity to the in-game choices that you make, um, and then like sex, race, culture, class, and items. It's cool when you have like a reaction to the items you're carrying. I remember that um, someone said that there was a reaction to the dead cats that they were carrying around or something. <laughs> the next section is animations and FX. Um, there really needs to be a different stance for recovery time and combat idle like there is in the Infinity Engine games. Not all the Infinity Engine games, it was something that was present in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Um, so that I think that's really important, especially for expert mode players, because they won't have the combat HUD to tell them what's going on. There needs to be more than one attack animation wep um, per melee weapon. Currently there's only one, a minimum of two would be nice. I think the bow reload animation needs to be improved. Currently it's, uh, like it's really quick and it just looks kind of, I don't know, it doesn't look that great. Um, and maybe they could have... Part, they, um, I know that crossbows, arbalists, and guns, they all have a, an animation that has to be played before they can fire off their weapon. Um, so it'd be nice if bows have to actually knock the bow before they before they shoot it or something like that. Even when you even when you remove recovery time with um, pause, the crossbow still ha has to actually um, load the bolt into the crossbow before they can attack, even if their recovery time is zero. Um, I think they need to improve the recovery time interaction with weapons classed as firearms because currently like when you're reloading an arbalist um, your recovery time goes down and then it doesn't it doesn't match the animation of the of the um, of the arbalist reload um, there needs to be different colored wizard cast effects for different types of spells currently it's like the one sort of orangey um, type FX, but it would be cool if there was like a green one and a red one and a uh, purple one and a blue one or something like that for the different uh, types of spells that they have, like defensive, offensive, etc, etc. Um, spell effects in general uh, that needs needs to be less flashy and toned down. Um, a lot of the spells 
especially buffs and debuffs, have like really huge AoE effects and they really that is really unnecessary. All it is needed is a per unit effect to show where the show, show that the unit's been affected. You don't need to have these flashy AoEs on the screen. Currently spell effects is making combat really confusing. Uh, the jib effects needs to be improved. Currently it's not that great. It could be better. Um, it's n I did st in the trailer it looks like ridiculously strange. The version in the game is better than that, but um, they still need to probably improve it a little bit more. Um, blood splatter from hits needs to be more prominent. Currently, I think it, like when you hit somebody, it creates a pool of black blood on the ground or something like that. Um, there needs to be actually like blood flying out from where they've been hit or something instead, as well as maybe temporary blood on the ground or something. And uh, weapon swapping needs to be an animation rather than instant, and then that needs to, the recovery time needs to follow the recovery time rules after that. Um, the next section is skills, and I've only got one thing to say here. Um, I think that the law skill should be improved in combat, because I don't think that adding in XP for uncover, uh, uncovering best area entries is going to make the law skill useful in combat at all. So I think maybe like... Um, once you uncover a bestiary entry, you should get like maybe a plus one bonus against it or something. So like, say you uncover um, the defense of a beetle, like you know what the defenses are. Maybe you get plus one against against that defense or something. Just something to make the law skill useful in combat. Um, the next section is controls. Um, I think that uh, the show all tooltips function of the tab key needs to be split from it because it is really frustrating. Especially when you're trying to use the um, other functions of the tab key, that needs to be made a separate key and bound to something else, like Alt or something like that. Um, right mouse button needs, either needs to be made a cancel plus move action, or binding cancel to right mouse button needs to not break the formation rotate function, because currently it does when you bind cancel to right mouse button. Because in the Infinity Energy games, you can cancel actions with right mouse. Um, the tab function in the inventory screen is currently currently cycles through um, the different characters. It really needs to be changed to um, removing the item delay on items, because that's how it works in the main HUD. And having it have a different function in the inventory screen is inconsistent UI design. Um, and it's also it all it goes against the muscle memory of those who are used to the Infinity Engine games. Um, making when you are uh, um, using the tab key to speed up a tooltip in the main HUD, it should have no effect on the game screen. Like in the Infinity Engine games, if you moused over a portrait and pressed tab, it would speed up the tooltip of that portrait. It would not trigger anything else in the game world. So um, they need to do that. And the other thing is that the the tab key doesn't work on the looting UI. So if you go to speed up the tooltip of an item and see what it is on the ground, it doesn't do that at all. Um, so they need to add that as well. Um, the next section is enchantment, and this is from Moonwolf, um, and he said he reckons that you need to show or warn uh, players about enchantment raising, because I think he said that um, he enchanted an item and it removed the, one of the previous enchantments or something like that, or it overrode it. Uh, the next section is bestiary, and this is also from Moonwolf, um, and he says that um, the bestiary entries with um, similar creatures like Adria Beetle, Stone Beetle, Wood Beetle. He reckons that they should all have like a, a different tab or a fold out underneath the same beetle entry rather than a separate entry for each. And the final section is sound and I've only got two things to add here at the moment. The first one is add in some VO options like the Infinity Energy games, like always, seldom or never so that you can control um, when voiceover options are played because currently when you can only hear like the um, voiceover, the temporary VO in the game very rarely when it uh, when you're moving your main character. And the last thing is that the, the UI sound for when you're closing UI elements has like two different sounds to it. It's got like um, it's got like a the, the woody sound and it's got that sort of really high pitched tinny sound that's really annoying. Um, and they're like sort of both uh, they're something they added in in version 2.78. It sounds really bad. They need to have a different sound for that. It, it just it doesn't sound right. Anyway, that concludes my list of my feature uh, wish list for the moment. Um, so I hope uh, this was helpful in some way, and I hope I, maybe I found some things that um, would be useful uh, for the game. Um, anyway, 
uh, that's all guys and thanks. <laughs>